All right, well, thanks so much for having me. Um, the thing that connects uh, that, uh, the, the, the last presentation with this presentation is the idea of benefiting from uh, when public officials get interested in something. NASA is, you know, maybe the prime example of the benefits of having um, uh, elected officials really go for something. And so that's what I'm going to talk about, too, is, is how can some of the challenges that we're facing collectively, especially economic challenges, be really helped when elected officials get really engaged in an idea like vertical farming. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk about this uh, uh, Chicago Vertical Farm Task Force that um, was in place in late 2000. Um, and I'm gonna really try to focus on um, the benefits of having the mayor of Chicago at that time, Mayor Daley, uh, get just really taken by Dixon's um, ideas and the way that, he's the way that he presented uh, the vertical farm then and now. So first thing about the task force was that um, it was uh, created as an interdisciplinary investigation. Public officials with private educational and public sector uh, leaders. And um, so I think it's not very different from what we're doing here today. And if uh, maybe another thing I can do right now is give you a preview of some of the things that, uh, uh, of one of these that has run its course um, so far. So the, um, when considering the composition of the task force, uh, Mayor Daley was interested in inviting, uh, first inviting Chicago area leaders from the food and pharmaceutical industries and coupling them with experts from agriculture, design, hydroponics, organics, public health, everybody that's here today. What happened though, and this is maybe the first challenge, is that um, the leaders, the, the business leaders didn't respond and they didn't take up the invitation. And so that left us with still an incredible uh, uh, group of people that was chaired um, by Dixon, the commissioner of the uh, Chicago Department of Environment and Mayor Daley, um, but that was a kind of missing component, and I think that that will remain a challenge, is to engage the corporate leaders uh, in this idea. So the mayor asked us to initially work on these uh, opportunities, he called them. Um, and I'll show you what some of those look like. It's probably impossible to read that, but I'll, uh, and I'm not going to highlight them. But the idea, basically, uh, in this kind of um, getting the mayor involved was coupling the existing, um, uh, uh, the existing um, sectors in Chicago, technology sectors, with um, what breakthrough opportunities and breakthrough uh, innovations could, could happen. Um, the mayor really wanted to know that this um, uh, project, the vertical, infra, vertical farm project, would um, create innovations in infrastructure, especially around, in his words, net zero and net positive innovations. Um, a lot of uh, what uh, was talked about a little bit in cross-programming with educational partnerships, especially job trainings, was incredibly important. Creating jobs is the de facto metric for working with public officials these days. Um, and design and, en and engineering opportunities, which are very well known to all of us, he was very interested in as well. Okay. The, Probably the number one opportunity of working with a public official is you get free land. And the mayor immediately, even before we started, said, you will have free land as long as you develop this idea and the consortium comes together to invest in it in some way. So we were going to, uh, he gave us um, a site in this, or multiple sites in the stockyards um, in Chicago. That was the old meatpacking district that lasted 100 years. Um, and it was really where uh, companies for more than 100 years really refined uh, some of the earliest innovations in food processing. So the mayor's idea was let's just reinvigorate uh, the stockyards and for I think it was $1, you could have enormous amount of, amount of land uh, to play in essentially. So what we did was we came up with um, four types, models, uh, that are very well known to everybody here um, as far as what we would investigate. Uh, the vertical production farm and the biotech incubator are what 
I will talk about a little bit uh, right now. Um, so what we did was we tried to identify all of these categories, um, uh, ownership, business plans, partnerships, components, financial incentives, and so forth, that were at the heart of these two uh, models so that we can try to figure out how to push them forward uh, in Chicago. Um, this is uh, one of the diagrams that we produced, and I'd like to point out just three parts of it. Um, number five, I, I don't know if you can see that, but over on the, your left is a biofuel energy plant. I'll talk about that. Uh, number 11 um, is, a, uh, is where the community engages uh, with, the, with the community of the stockyards community, which is still stocked full of blue collar workers that have a history, cultural history of uh, being interested in agriculture. And 14 is uh, uh, a complete street eco boulevard, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit as well. Uh, this is just an interior perspective. Um, so given that initial costs of most buildings represent about 10 to 15 percent of a building's total cost, um, this is the equation uh, that we used, a life cycle cost analysis equation. And what it did was it helped us balance the long-term maintenance cost, operational costs, especially re related to energy and water usage, um, over the lifetime of the vertical farm. Um, and that was really important to us because we, we needed to make that argument uh, to ourselves and, and to the mayor. This is what we came up with as far as the costs um, uh, for the uh, vertical farm. Um, so in addition to just the, the, what any of us would expect in terms of using sustainable technology to build it or design and build it, we decided that energy generation had to be part of the design solution. Um, as has been talked a little bit about, lighting 24 hours a day, especially in this vertical configuration, would be enormously expensive according to our, um, our, our calculations. And um, financial incentive programs to offset energy costs just are not out there, uh, despite you know, the fact that they should be out there. So um, energy independence, or at least energy, energy security, became really important. Um, so we investigated the use of a, a biofuel power plant. And um, basically, the, the one that we looked at is an existing technology that has been built uh, in, in Germany. Um, and it's a feedstock thermo thermolysis facility. It makes energy from any, uh, any uh, balance of um, bio input. The biggest waste product in the state of Illinois is human waste, sludge, essentially, that is this enormous resource that one could tap into. Uh, and we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, so just a little bit about, um, uh, about that. Oh, sorry. Um, the main thing to point out here is, uh, without getting into detail, is that um, if we were to uh, um, build the facility uh, to the size of a four megawatt power plant using human waste, we could then power about 1,600 homes, basically the workers, uh, as well. And we thought that that would be an interesting um, collaborative challenge that could be taken up that could potentially get the interest, pique the interest of some funding agencies as well. Okay. One of the key obstacles and barriers that we um, uh, uh, found was that aquaponics was not listed as a permissible use uh, within a building in the Chicago Building Code when um, we were doing this project, which is a huge obstacle. I mean, you just can't imagine the, um, uh, the, the, the time that it would take to get over that. Um, other things uh, have to do with the Illinois um, uh, Environmental Protection Agency um, restricting the use of reuse of water. That's not allowed right now in Illinois and a lot of other states, a huge obstacle. Um, and a lot of food processing is not allowed in the city of Chicago uh, at this point. So these are all things that have to be seriously addressed. Um, potential funding sources that we became interested in uh, to learn more about 
um, included unlocking state and federal guaranteed loans um, and direct governmental funding. Some are listed here, I won't read them all. Um, but I would say one huge challenge is to really get to some details on this. Somebody or a group of somebody's really needs to investigate how to unlock some of these federal grants. And there are an enormous amount that look on paper as though they would be perfect for a vertical farm, but then, you know, are they really? Second model that I'm gonna talk briefly about is the idea of a biotech incubator. Um, this type of vertical farm would house R&D driven companies um, active in, uh, let's say, life sciences, agrotech, bioenergy. Um, the farm could be a business incubator startup tar targeted towards helping uh, uh, businesses that want to grow in these industries and existing companies that are working right now uh, that would especially benefit from having a vertical farm in downtown Chicago. Uh, this diagram uh, here basically just investigates adjacencies between these businesses and um, an agricultural area that they could use. Um, and for us in Chicago, this um, model really tapped into the historic economic strength of the state of Illinois, which is agriculture. Um, the facility really, we thought, could be designed for advanced research in plant breeding, genetics, horticulture, uh, entomology, plant pathology, all of the things that are already happening statewide. Regarding the business and ownership model of this particular um, uh, uh, um, um, farm, um, we thought they could be governmentally sponsored by economic, economic development organizations. Um, you know, at the time, Mayor Daley's brother was the chief of staff in Washington, so we really thought that there could be that synergy that would really help uh, with a federally um, supported uh, business model. Uh, we tried not to count on private investment, as you can see in this last one. Less than 10% of for-profit incubators exist in the country. We also identified potential tenants. Uh, this is Chrom Chromatin. They have their corporate offices in, Il in Illinois and rent greenhouse space at UIUC, uh, downstate University of Illinois campus. Um, they are a biotech company developing all sorts of plant-based technologies. Um, and we talked to them and they thought it was a great idea and they would, ver they would absolutely participate uh, in this kind of endeavor, they thought. Bartlett Tree Experts, corporate office again in Chicago, greenhouse facilities in North Carolina. Um, they grow 2,000 species of trees and plants, studying that all the time to figure out uh, how their business can improve. Argonne National Laboratory, um, they're constantly looking for uh, collaborations uh, and they seek opportunities to uh, uh, do industry transfer, and they too thought this would be a great opportunity for them. Um, we also investigated the concept of complete streets to reduce the uh, very challenging costs all in other parts of the world, not in Chicago, but you name these cities that are popping up without water. So the cost of water uh, could really be reduced through this idea. Um, the goal of complete streets is to deal with stormwater management, water efficiency, um, and then uh, uh, issues of recycling, reducing heat island effect, and so forth. Uh, this project was a precursor project um, that, uh, uh, that, that we were working on with the mayor, um, and that uh, he, mayor basically coupled this project and me with Dixon and said, okay, here's how we might be able to put this together. That's basically, this is a very hypothetical project, but they are starting to be built in Chicago. This is an example uh, that is really just finishing construction now where water is being sequestered and reused in some cases. Um, and it's all about um, uh, rethinking the infrastructure, publicly supported infrastructure, to reduce the cost of water for the city and to the environment. Okay, so I just have four slides left that talk about the key findings and uh, the next steps. So the first key finding was that it's incredibly difficult to engage public officials, even if they're interested. Uh, so, you know, we, I think, uh, have to do a better job of uh, capturing momentum in these kind of endeavors, 
and when an elected official gets interested, really latching on and getting something done quickly. That's something we learned. Um, build a prototype. You know, there's no better way of testing uh, uh, operational te and technical strategies. Uh, and we thought that do it by doing that, of course, this is exactly what we're going to come up with at the end of tomorrow. You know, we know we can gain uh, so much understanding. So the next key steps um, we thought and what we recommended was convening uh, a mayoral invitational conference to help galvanize uh, this growing network of initiatives that are happening in Chicago and throughout the world, really. And think about fundraising strategies and investment opportunities that could be generated with uh, uh, existing and new knowledge that could be produced. That, again, exactly what we're going to come up with at the end of tomorrow, I'm sure. And another you know, really key next step included assessing uh, how we could use the city of Chicago's federal funding experts and lobby lobbyists in DC, you know, how we could, um, how, how we could get at, gain access to these people and how we can assist the private sector investment groups to merge with uh, already the asks that are happening from the city federally, you know, gaining dollars uh, to support this. We also thought that it would really be important for the city to provide infrastructural and technical assistance at various project phases of all four of the vertical models, the vertical farm models that we were looking at and identified because um, there really is a lot of expertise the city can, uh, can, can couple, but also there's a lot of funding sources that um, someone like a mayor has access to. And having a kind of constant dialogue would really make a huge difference, we thought. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Cherry Kubota from University of Arizona. I have a question about the spiral building design. Is that expecting 100% natural light for the uh, plant growing, or are you expecting some artificial lighting inside? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, um, we're going to utilize that, that diagram, basically utilizing both um, natural light and 24-hour uh, light. But the, the real reason for that um, uh, for that was gravity, just using a gravity-fed, water-based system uh, to operate with. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question. Oh, yeah. sure. Have you any contacts with the First Lady yet? <laughs> uh, you know, we, we thought, we went into this task force, and I'm sure Dixon has his own memories of this, <laughs> with such high hopes that Chicago would be able to pull this off because of political connections. Um, and, but just to be honest, they, they are fleeting. You know, the interest, any interest a public official has, I think one cannot count on it to be long-term. And so you just have to strike as soon as it's hot, I think. And one thing we learned is we have to have a lot going for us day one. And we didn't have that because these kind of workshops have, are just starting. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.